My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Some of my earliest memories from childhood are of growing up in a predominantly Kashubian neighborhood in a small city in southeastern Minnesota known as Winona. At the heart of our little neighborhood of Kashubians, a small ethnic group from the Pomeranian region of Poland, stood a grand church under the patronage of St. Stanislaus Koska. As a child, the church made a great impression upon me. Its towering white dome hovered over the old houses that dotted the east side of the city. The silence of mornings would be broken by the church bells summoning us to Mass as early as 7 a.m. in the morning. How many of you would get up that early? I can still recall resting in bed on those still mornings and listening to the bells of the church, knowing full well that I soon would have to get up and dress for church. And our community life seemed to revol revolve around the church, not only for religious life, but also social, with wedding parties, community fairs and socials all taking place on its grounds. In a sense, you could say the church oriented the life of the community and drew our focus onto God and each other. What struck me most about that church and neighborhood, though, was how life would all seem to come to a standstill on Sundays and high holy days. The neighborhood markets and shops would close and families would gather after church for large, hearty dinners on cool winter days or barbecues on warm summer nights. A certain peace would fall over our community and all would enjoy a momentary rest from the struggles and challenges of daily life. Sundays, in other words, provided a respite for us and a time of healing and restoration. They were welcome days for many, as many in the community worked at the local flour mills that dotted the Mississippi River that flowed nearby. And the factories would go quiet for those few days. There were also days my mother and father would perhaps permit a few indulgences to my brothers and I, such as the sweet donut from the local bakery, or free time with my cousins, so we could play late into the night around the neighborhood or along the banks of the river. Little did my parents know the trouble we would get into, but I suspect they figured it out in good time anyways with the neighborhood gossip. I'd always get nervous on Mondays, mon Monday mornings when we'd run into, the, into one of the babushkas at the corner market and wonder what they would say to my mother and father about our antics from the previous day. Well, the nostalgia of those times lingers in my heart and mind many years later. I cannot help what a blessing, but think what a blessing it was that Sunday was held with such regard and how much we might have lost when those customs and traditions faded away. Now Sundays are but another day of the week, a day in which we find ourselves frantically consumed by the demands of everyday life. Although I'm no traditionalist, I do believe we suffered a great loss with the demise of those Sundays' observances. And I don't simply mean in terms of religious life, but rather also for our well-being and human, and for the well-being of our human personhood. There was an ancient wisdom that gave life to those days, an understanding that we are not meant to labor seven days a week. Yet our consumerist, materialistic society now demands that we sacrifice our health and well-being on the sacred altars of hip hyperactive busyness, progress, and technological compulsivity. Even worse, our new patterns of life have created even greater social injustices, with the ones most vulnerable to the new demands, those trapped in the cycle of poverty and social marginalization, caught up in a never-ending cycle of oppressive work.
for little pay. The notion of Sundays as a day of rest was drawn from the Jewish tradition of the Sabbath. Although Sundays are often mistakenly understood to be the Sabbath, they are not. The Sabbath is the period of time from Friday through Saturday evening. It is marked by our Jewish siblings with prayer in temple or synagogue on Friday nights, religious studies on Sunday mornings, and family time away from the usual activities of everyday life. The Sabbath extends to all creation, with farmers not only giving rest to their farm work, but also leaving fields go fallow every seven years. Sabbath, simply put, was a time for all creation to rest, heal, and be restored by its creator. Thus, we come to the core difficulty of today's gospel reading. At first, it might strike us as odd that the temple leader takes such great offense to Jesus' healing of the woman on the Sabbath. Yet we need to recall that the leader was likely trying to ensure Jesus and the community adhered to the commands surrounding the Sabbath. Although healing on the Sabbath was never explicitly prohibited by Mosaic law, the many and many of the rabbis at the time taught their communities to aid others in need on the Sabbath. For some, the act of healing appeared to be an act of work. Thus, the temple leader's condemnation of Jesus' act of healing, he perceived it as work. Yet Jesus challenges the leader and reminds them of the Sabbath's real purpose. It is for rest, healing, and renewal. Jesus is simply living out the true purpose of the Sabbath, while the man was concerned with the associated rules and guidelines. That, however, is not the only point of this story. By healing on the Sabbath, Jesus reminds us that we too must be instruments of God's grace, healing, and peace. The Sabbath isn't simply for us to enjoy. It is also a reminder for us to extend the rest and healing to all, particularly the most vulnerable to the demands of everyday life and to those who suffer from oppressive conditions. What better way for us to remind ourselves of our vocation to be God's instruments of healing and peace than to celebrate the sacrament of baptism today with Muhammad, a member of our community. Soon we shall renew with Muhammad our commitment to care for God's people and God's creation. Soon we shall recall that we are another Christ and are entrusted to proclaim God's justice and peace in a world torn by sin and injustice. But to live out that vocation, we need to pause and to listen to God and the community. This is why Sundays are so important in the life of every Christian. Well, they are indeed a day for us to give rest and to give thanks for what God has done for us in salvation history, they are a time for us to be rooted in the living God through attentive listening to God's word and sharing in the sacrament of eternal life, the Holy Eucharist. To be Christ, we need to be fed by word and sacrament. If not, we are simply no different than any other social organization. My friends, I invite you to resist the demands of our consumer society and to take a day of rest, to be with God and neighbor on this day. Make a point of going to church, even if you find yourself far from home. And this is an important point. We've gotten way too casual about this. Make a point of sharing in the community's life on Sundays. Even when you travel, look up for another church. Let yourself be fed, nourished, sustained, so that you too can be a living sign of God's justice and peace in the world. The world needs us to be a living sign of God's presence of grace, healing, and peace. Amen.